Most of us don't think twice about going to the faucet for a cool drink of water, or how convenient it is to turn on the water and maybe keep our yards green. Maybe even wash the car or the dog. But there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to get that water to you and to ensure its quality. A journey that will take you back before the 1900s when the first water system was franchised to Paul Perkins and constructed in 1883, using then a pump house at Fulbright Spring and taking you up to 1957 when city utilities purchased the water system and into the present day. In the early 1900s, with a population close to 24,000 and less than seven square miles in the city limits, Springfield was experiencing tremendous growth. The downtown area was booming with construction. First electric lights were installed. Automobiles led to the end of streetcars, and railroads facilitated the progress of industrial expansion. Springfield's continual growth would heighten the need for measures to provide adequate and safe drinking water. Fulbright Spring was the main water supply for the city until 1887 when the Jones Spring, now the site of OTC, on the eastern edge of the city was leased. Growth of the city around the spring made the water unsuitable and it was eventually abandoned. In 1889, Perkins sold the system to George Westcott and Samuel Hansen of Maine under the name of the Springfield Water Works Company. And from 1889 into the early 1900s, the demand for additional water supplies continued and resulted in the purchases of Valley Water Mill and Ritter and Owen Springs. H.B. McDaniel bought into the company, which was reorganized to again become the Springfield Water Company. Within a few years after the purchase of the springs, the water company finally addressed the issues of odor and taste complaints by installing the first filtration plant with a hyperchlorite addition at the Fulbright site. In 1911, ownership again changed, and the system would operate under the name of the Springfield City Water Company. Under this ownership, the Fulbright Reservoir was completed, and McDaniel Lake was impounded, and construction of a pump station was completed. In 1930, the Consumers Water Company of Portland, Maine, purchased the existing waterworks. Within just a few years, scares of E. coli in the water and reported cases of typhoid fever caused additional concern for the quality of water. Ammonia chlorination facilities were added to battle these issues and help ease the fears of the community. Beginning in 1937, five years of construction resulted in the Fulbright Water Treatment Plant. The next ten years saw a record drought, the completion of Fellows Lake, and citizens concerned about a reliable water supply. Various factors in the 1930s, including high rates, hydrant rental, and the typhoid scare, resulted in contentious times with calls for additional taxation of the system, termination of the franchise, construction of a separate municipal system, and finally, in 1940, an election to purchase the system, but it failed. Opportunities for public purchase of the water system occurred on regular intervals during this time, and by 1957, the community continued to suffer from the drought that hit in 1953, and the response by the water company had been too little too late. Although the water company had constructed Fellows Lake during the drought, it was not a usable resource, and a temporary plant had been constructed near the James River, in addition to six wells being ordered by the Public Service Commission to be drilled around McDaniel Lake, none of which prevented the community from having a water shortage. After price negotiations in 1957, the community was ready to buy, and on May 14th, 32% of the registered voters went to the polls and gave an 82% favorable vote to purchase. In addition to the drought, other issues cited for approval included the successful operation of the gas and electric systems by city utilities and the Citizens Committee slogan, We're going to pay for it anyway, why not own it? The purchase transaction was completed at 10 a.m. on December 30th, 1957, Price, $20.7 million. City Utilities began its operation of the water system knowing that rates were a sensitive issue and that adequate source of supply and treatment capacity were major factors in the approval of the water system purchase. The private water company had a rate increase pending with the Public Service Commission that was estimated to nearly double water rates, and City Utilities had no intention of allowing that to happen. City Utilities accepted the mandate to provide adequate planning and construction facilities to prevent any further shortages of water. That commitment has resulted in many projects in our 50-year history. 
The 1960s saw the installation of additional water mains and ground level tanks, an increase in plant capacity and filtration improvements at Fulbright, plus increased pumping capacity at McDaniel Lake. The 1970s concluded with the purchase of the Parkview, the Park Crest, and Orchard Crest Water Companies, the implementation of the new computer control system at Fulbright, the construction of the new Blackburn Water Treatment Plant utilizing the James River, the installation of additional water and transmission lines, and a fluoridation system added to the plants and wells. During the 1980s and 90s, the spillways in McDaniel and Fellows Lake were raised to increase storage capacity. Fulbright was designated by the American Water Works Association as a Waterworks National Landmark. A phased expansion plan was developed to increase the Blackman plant's capacity, and major improvements occurred throughout the year, including the construction of a new pipeline from Fellows Lake to the plant. Another significant event that occurred during the late 90s was the completion of the Saul Nucitelli pipeline that delivered water from Stockton Lake to Fellows Lake. CU entered the current decade with a major event on September 11th that caused all utilities to revisit the vulnerability of their water systems and emergency response plans. We will continue to incorporate practices that will provide the safe and adequate supply of water at a reasonable rate that the community has come to expect and deserve. A mission statement for today and for the years to come.